I had an affair. Oh, no. Yeah. So he drew a line in the sand. So if he was such a good guy, why did you step out on him? Hold on. I'm almost okay. That's good. Um, That's why. I don't know. She first beta-tized and then cheated on her husband from Rich Cooper Clips. So the high-value alpha guys that you also find you know, attraction to, how many of them have you dated? Have you, have you met many of them? or? Um, some have been not so much, um, but I'd say most of them, yeah, are. My ex is the typical, you know, Tennessee, South Carolina, tattoos, motorcycle riding. Yeah. Open, he opened my car door for 12 years, you know. Okay. Well, he um, sounds like an awesome guy. What happened to the marriage? Why did it end? <laughs> he opened her car door for 12 years. No, I'm just playing. It's my fault. I, was, I had an affair. Oh, no. Yeah. So he drew a line in the sand. So if he was such a good guy, why did you step out on him? Hold on. I'm almost okay. that's, um, that's why. I don't know. Oh. Did you get bored? How convenient. Yes. Why did you get bored if he's doing everything you want? Opening the car door, he's got the tattoos, he rides a motorcycle, he's successful, he's a southern guy. I don't know. Midlife crisis. That's what my friends say. Right. He did everything I want. He was perfect. Great guy. And that's why I cheated on him. Right. Was it worth it? Probably not. Do you wish that you were back with him? Well, he still wants me to, and I'm not. I'm just not. I'm just still not there. I'm just not. But I know I'm going to regret it. I know it's going to like hit me like a ton of bricks, and I'm going to regret it. Wait, what happened on. to the you? You stepped out on him, and he wants to reconcile, and you and you don't. He would do anything for me to be back. No, I don't. So you guys have kids together, though. To be with him, but I just don't want to be with him. I don't know why. It just like I just like fell out of love like completely. And what happened to the guy that you had the affair with? Um, that didn't really work either. Because, I mean, like, you must have thought that, that it was going to go somewhere. Like, you were, were hoping that it was going to go somewhere, but it just didn't. So, yeah. Was he married? Did he just end it? Like, what happened? Yeah, or younger. I just, once it was not, um, he was younger. Forbidden anymore. Thought I kind of, I think it was hotter when it was forbidden. Oh, okay, so you wanted some excitement. The thrill. You know, I think a lot of guys underestimate the the psyche of women and their arousal. So first off, a lot of people will say, oh, you know, she's just, she's not a good woman. There's this idea of, of good women out there. And to an extent, that's absolutely true. There are differences. But women's arousal, they're all pretty much the same in that way. They're all kind of genetically coded to be aroused by kind of the same thing really and so a way for a lot of guys to hear this and then cope with it they'll say oh well that's just her she's just a bad woman and she messed up she definitely messed up but you hear her talking about she got bored it was forbidden this is not just with her you can you can judge her political opinions you can judge the decisions she's made in her life but what you cannot just neglect and say, oh, not all women are like this, is the arousal part, the part that she got bored, the part that she inherently liked the forbidden apple, right? And guys think just by telling her no and not letting her walk all over you and doing these, like, let's be honest, super basic things that a lot of men are messing up, they think by just setting boundaries and, and telling her no and not being... Uh, a pushover and a nice guy, that this won't happen. The problem is they can still get bored. So a lot of times you'll hear guys who are really deep into to game and stuff. They'll talk about like the emotional roller coaster. They'll talk about tension and how you can create tension. And one thing I remember reading in the Rational Mail from Rolo is that comfort is not something that will get you sex. Okay, that's not something that's going to create arousal. And and the thing he was talking about in that book is how comfort does not create uh, attraction and arousal. There is no competition anxiety. There is no competition anxiety when you live with your woman, when you overtly commit to her and validate her and let her know you've got me. Competition anxiety, tension, 
these things are what creates arousal and that's why you know when you have breakup or when you have makeup sex or when you break up and you spend time apart and then you see each other again things are hotter you know it, it comes down to competition anxiety and tension these types of things are not created with comfort and so with a woman like this what she's talking about is there was no competition anxiety there was just kind of a plateau of emotions she got bored you know even when listening to people speak this is why one thing i do try to work on with my speaking is i try to speed it up and then i'll slow it down a little bit because when the brain picks up on patterns it gets bored so it's the same thing pretty much with all things in life. If the brain can really predict what's going to happen next, it gets a bit bored. So that's why if you're, if you're listening to someone speak and they are just constantly speaking really slow, but they don't speed it up, it gets boring. Or even if you're listening to someone who speaks really fast constantly and in, in your mind, you're like, oh my God, I'm going to have to listen to this guy speak this fast this whole time. You don't like it. It's too much. It's ex It's predictable. And in some ways it is boring. So that's why it's good to slow things down and then you pick it up and to, to keep their attention to not get bored so even when you're in a relationship with someone like this and definitely women if they can predict what's coming next if they're if the emotion if the, the emotional state they're in is just constant that's gonna that's gonna breed boredom unfortunately and then if they are very aware you have no other options. You are she is your only source of sex. There's no competition anxiety. You guys are all lovey dovey, you know, for this friendship type relationship and there's no tension. This is what you're gonna get. So you were bored, it sounds like, in your marriage and your relationship. <laughs> all my friends are like, midlife crisis. I'm like, oh Did you like why did you do it if you thought like I'm guessing you thought that he was going to be upset, right? Like you didn't have an open relationship. It was it was unknown to him. It was a surprise. Correct. How did he find out? I finally just told him I, I just couldn't do it anymore. I just I, I was getting real sloppy. Uh huh. I just got to the point where I was like, like we had our location. You know, we shared locations, and I would just turn it off. <laughs> You'd be like, right. why? Is I'm like, oh, I don't know. I'm out. I can't turn it back on. I don't know how. Bye. Like. Right. I was just getting real sloppy and bad. Yeah. It sucks, man. What would you do different if you could go back in a time machine? I couldn't tell you because I don't know if I can make myself feel that way about him anymore. Mm. I don't know. I don't know why. There's nothing wrong with him. He's like perfect, attractive, everything. Okay, so let me ask you this question because there's this notion, notion that I talk about in my book called Betatization Through a Thousand Concessions. And for those people that have read my book and know what I'm talking about, if you know, you know, if you don't, let me take a moment to explain. Um, women will betatize men. Women will betatize all men in a long-term relationship or a marriage. It's, it's not a question of if, it's to the extent of how much, right? So the guys, so it looks something like this. Hey, honey, you know, don't brush your teeth over there. You're going to get toothpaste on the carpet. Honey, um, you know, mm. put the white socks in the white hamper and the dark socks in the dark hamper. Honey, let's go vegan together. Honey, let's do this. Da, 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 da. And it's like the guy goes through this process of making concessions one after the other with a stamp. I don't know if you ever watch any stand up comedy, but there's a routine that uh, I think it's Chris Rock does. And he's like, just say yes, 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 yes. And he just stamps everything. Yes. Right. I actually reacted to that video on this channel. And when he was saying that part of the skit, I had to I had to step in and say, don't do that. <laughs> As you, as you go through this process as a guy just agreeing to everything and not able to say no to her, she starts to lose attraction to you, right? Because think, he becomes a yes man. Yes, yeah. I think that's what it is. He became so like... Yeah, it, it's not just that though. That's the thing. You can still tell her no and it doesn't necessarily mean she won't get bored. Engulfed in me. So he did exactly what he was told to do. He took vows... Mm -hmm. and sickness and health and better for worse uh rich or poor blah 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 said yes to everything you asked him to do was a good looking guy was i'm guessing he, he took care of things paid the bills there was no issues with of money. of course he did we struggled for a little while but we yeah. haven't the last few years okay so what was more attractive about the guy that you had the affair with he was new and exciting and i didn't know much about him and he was elusive a bit of a myst mystery that my female intuition felt the need to to solve 
I w- it's the forbidden fruit, you know? The forbiddenness, I think. Uh, <laughs> well, that's like literally it. See, I don't think that a lot of women understand that this happens. They're oblivious to it, you know, for the most part, but they don't intend to make the guy unattractive. It's just that I think it's in women's nature to always test a man, right? They want to know that he's competent. They want to know that he can get things done. Anything I said, anything and everything. And I think over time it got like annoying to me. Right. Which is interesting, isn't it? Because yeah. this is what most women, you know, would expect to want in a marriage or. And it's what they say they want as well. And this is another reason why you really, you, you, it, you can't listen, can't listen to them. They describe comfort. These are comfort things. And what I said earlier and, and what Rollo said in the rational mail as well, if you've ever read it, arousal, these things are not built through comfort at all. Anything right. like that. You had that and Absolutely. that got boring for you. Anything for a man like that. And you just don't want him. I'm like, sorry. I don't know. Yeah, there's this, not to interrupt again so quickly, but there's this this idea that, yeah, a lot of men think that being super lovey-dovey, getting her flowers, cuddling her whenever she wants, they think these things create arousal and, and attraction. And And why wouldn't they? They've been told by women that's what they like. So you would think that the thing that you are trying to go after and accomplish, you would ask, how can I accomplish you, right? How can I get you? And they tell you, well, here's how. And you're like, okay, I'm going to do that. And you do it. And, and this happens. She cheats on you, bounces. And then you're left asking, what what just happened? I don't know what to do. To like- yeah, I mean, and there's, there's 0% chance that you can have a respect for a man that is begging to take you back after you're the one that stepped yeah. out. I mean, that's, yeah, yeah there, there's just no way there. I mean, like, I'd be interested to see, like, I mean, it's, it's all hypothetical. My guess is that you would have some respect back and you would feel the pull if he was the one pulling away. Um, but all he's doing is, you know, he's a pinata. You're kicking the shit out of him and all he's doing is pitting up candy. Yeah. It's an interesting way to put it. Yeah, and one thing Rich says is like once she sees you as a beta, it's very difficult to remove that perception. It's really difficult. This is why you, you just can't let it get there. Can't let it get there, man. Anyways, that was a video from Rich Cooper Clips. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like and subscribe.